Good morning, everybody. My name is Kim, and I'm from LAMP Early On. So today, we will be doing a special circle, um, as well as an activity that relates to emotional development. So emotional development starts from really, really young when they're infants through bonding that occurs between you and your little one, uh, which later will help them to learn how to communicate with others, as well as connect with others um, through friendship, uh, resolve conflict as well, and cope with challenges that arise. So it really works on their problem solving skills. Um, it also gives them the confidence to reach uh, goals that they set for themselves and ability to keep going through difficult tasks, such as if you've ever noticed your little one gets frustrated with, um, with puzzles if they can't get it right, um, it's one of those things. So usually between zero to 12 months, you and your little one are working to form that connection, the attachment, and the bonding um, in order for you to kind of prepare them for uh, the next stages, which is between uh, their one and two years, you'll notice that they um, uh, can't really control their emotions, temper tantrums will start to arise. Uh, so it's really important uh, for us as the adult, as the caregiver, to help them feel uh, safe and secure. And one of the uh, ways you can do that is by being their secure base. So if you've ever noticed them play uh, and you're a little apart from them, uh, every once in a while they'll, they'll check back and make sure you're still there. Uh, that's perfectly normal and that actually um, is a sign that your little one has established you as their secure base. Um, so it's important that once you start seeing that they're a little bit uncomfortable or they keep looking back, um, you can go up to them, you can encourage them uh, to explore their surroundings, that it's safe to do so, um, and if they need any help, that you can help guide them through that process. Um, also look for ways to incorporate your culture um, in your home, uh, in their daily routine. So, you know, for example, having um, like the important adults or caregivers in their lives, um, if you know the name. So for example, my nephew doesn't call me aunt, he calls me um, the Vietnamese version of aunt, even though he doesn't know how to speak it. So that's a little, little way to incorporate. Um, if you have favorite stories uh, that you read when you were little, um, then you can try to read it to them as well as maybe like a bedtime routine. Um, and speaking of routine, that is a, another great way to help um, make them feel secure and also develop their emotional development. Um, having a consistent routine and transition is pretty good. I know it's difficult during these times, but you can help ease that anxiety in your little one um, by even something simple as, you know, hey, uh, after we eat breakfast, uh, we're going to go to the park or we're going to go visit grandma or grandpa, something like that, so that they know what to expect. Um, children around this age really thrive on routine and transition, um, and it's to help uh, with their anxiety levels. And it also gives them a sense of control over, over their daily life. So once they've hit around two or three, uh, they are capable of empathy. So if you've ever noticed them playing, they hear someone crying and then they'll look over to see uh, who's crying or they'll, they'll make a comment. Um, that is a sign of empathy uh, and you can help uh, develop their empathy um, or their emotional development just by labeling their emotion or if they hear a little one crying, you can help label um, uh, that or try to see how they, they are feeling. So things like, I see you're very sad or maybe she's crying because she's really sad um, or I, I can see you're very angry, stuff like that. So explaining to your little one um, why you've placed limits or rules um, around them will help because at around two to three, uh, they will, they do have some understanding. Obviously, you're gonna be repeating yourself a lot around this age too, but that's perfectly normal. So things like um, 
you must like you when we cross the road you must hold my hand um, because you might get hurt or a car might come if they can't see you uh, just stuff like that especially around safety I know safety is a very hard um, a very hard limit but things like play um, it's another great way to help develop their emotional development uh, letting your child uh, lead the play um, again it's about the control especially around the two to three year mark where they're really trying to gain their independence um, so allowing them to make choices that you are comfortable with um, such as their play or um, even something simple as getting dressed in the morning if you have the time in the morning you can get them to decide between maybe two sweaters that you picked out for them or two pants that you picked out for them as well so um, no matter which they choose you'll be you'll be comfortable with that um, and like I mentioned before playing um, songs and books are a great way to help um, teach your little one about emotional development and that is what we will be doing today so we are going to get started hello everybody and how are you how are you how are you hello everybody and how are you it's great to see you today the good morning train is coming how are you choo choo the good morning train is coming how are you choo choo the good morning train is coming the good morning train is coming the good morning train is coming how are you choo choo say hello to my friends how are you choo choo say hello to my friends how are you choo choo say hello to my friends say hello to my friends say hello to my friends how are you choo choo good job everybody hopefully uh, all my friends who know the songs are singing along with me at home the more we get together 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 the more we get together the happier we'll be because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends the more we get together the happier we'll be yay okay my friends let's sing happy and you know it i have with me a few friends that will help me sing the song are we ready if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're surprised and you know it take a gasp if you're surprised then you know it take a gasp if you're surprised then you know it and you really want to show it if you're surprised then you know take a gasp if you're oh no look at my friend here if you're sad and you know it cry boo hoo if you're sad and you know it, cry boo-hoo, If you're sad and you know it and you really want to show it, If you're sad and you know it, cry boo-hoo, But if you're, uh-oh, my friend here doesn't look too happy either. If you're angry and you know it, take a breath, if you're angry and you know it, take a breath. If you're angry and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're angry and you know it, take 
take a breath. <sighs> Good job, my friends. And our next song is I Love You. I love you. You love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Mwah. Won't you say you love me too? Let's sing it one more time and hopefully my friends will join me at home. I love you, you love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Mwah. Won't you say you love me too? Yay! Good job, everybody. Right, so our next son is Mr. Sun. So I want all my friends at home to get their Mr. Suns out. I have mine here. Ready? Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, won't you please shine down on me? Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, he's hiding behind the trees. These little children are asking you to please come up so they can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, won't you please shine down on me? Yay! Good job, my friends. Hopefully, you guys are singing at home. And now, we're going to talk about how we feel today. All right, so let's look at all the emotions that I have here first. So we have sad. Oh, look how sad he is. We have, oh, tired. You know, just one of those days you didn't have a good sleep, right, my friends? Or you guys played really, really hard and now you're just tired. There's also angry. Oh my goodness. Maybe someone took your toy and now you're just very, very angry. And we have, we have happy. Maybe you got to see someone at the park or maybe it's because you played a really good game and now you're super happy. So for today, you know, I think I am feeling happy today. I'm feeling really happy. You know why my friends? It's because I get to sing and read with you guys at home. But you know, it's okay to feel sad and tired and angry as well. I feel tired and angry and sad some days myself and it's okay. You know what I like to do when I'm feeling angry? I like to talk about it. I like to go to my mom or my dad or my friends and I tell them why I'm angry. I use my words, you know. Sometimes when I'm sad, I start crying. And then I like to talk about it as well. If I'm really tired, I like to take a nap. Or I like to sleep. That's what I like to do. But my friends, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling oh, tired? Are you feeling angry today? Or are you feeling happy? These are all emotions that we feel. Okay, my friend, so we are going to be reading a book, but I brought my friend Barbara here to help hello. me. Hello. <laughs> Say hello, Barbara. Hello, boys and girls. All right, so for today, we are gonna be reading The Feeling Bears, and Barbara has all of our bears as well to show. Yeah, different colors mm -hmm. and different emotions. Yeah. Bears feel all the emotions as well. So, Blue Bear is sad. 
he misses his mommy. Oh dear, look how sad Blue Bear is. Blue Bear's mom comes home and now he's happy again. Do you guys miss your mommy or daddy when you don't see them? I know I do. Red Bear is angry. Yellow Bear took her toy. Oh my goodness. When my brother or sister would take my toy, oh, I would get so mad. Yellow Bear and Red Bear share the toy. They love to share, and look how happy they are now. <gasps> Purple Bear, Purple Bear is scared. Oh no, he heard a loud noise. Purple Bear's dad tells him that everything is okay. Oh, and he's, he's happy now. Yellow Bear is happy. She likes school very much. Do you guys like school? Yellow Bear loves to play with all of her friends. All of her friends. Yeah, look. Yeah. All, all of four them. of them all together. And look, all of our bears are angry, sad, happy, and scared. But just like me, they talked to their mommy or their daddy, and then they felt happy again. All right, my friends, I hope you love that story. Can you bring back? Yeah. Our next book doesn't have any props, so I'm going to go nice and close to the camera for you guys to see the pictures. So this one is, I love you because you're you. Look at that. I love you when you're happy and grinning ear to ear. I love you when you're sleepy and want to snuggle near. I love you when you're silly and dancing round and round. You guys want to dance round and round? I love you when you're frightened and you hear a scary sound. Oh my goodness. I don't like loud sounds myself, my friends. I love you when you're bashful and hide behind my knee. Aw, look how shy he is. But that's okay if you're shy, right? Everyone is different and that's okay. I love you when you're brave and from my arms you flee. Oh my goodness. I don't know, is that safe, my friends? Climbing that fence like that, I don't know. Look how scared mom is. I love you when you're curious and searching here and there. And I love you when you're proud, your head held in the air. Look how proud he feels. And look, do you think he's proud because mommy loves the artwork that he did? And now he's happy because of it? I think so. I love you when you're sick <clears throat> and need to rest in bed. Oh my goodness, Owl Doctor is telling mommy, he needs to stay in bed. I love you when you're frisky and standing on your head. Oh my goodness, look how silly. I love you when you're sad and need a kiss and hug. Do you guys need a hug and a kiss from mommy or daddy when you're feeling sad? I know I do. Hugs make everything okay, right? but hugs from people I know and love. I love you when you're playful and rolling on the rug. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it looks like he's caught on something. Can you see that, guys? <laughs> I love you when you're angry and cross your arms and pout. Oh my goodness. When you're angry, do you guys do that too? I know I do that when my dad makes me angry. <laughs> I love you when you're wild and yell and scream and shout. 
<laughs> Look how loud he must be yelling and shouting because his mommy's covering her ears. I love you any way you feel, no matter what you do. Isn't that right, my friends? Mommy or daddy will always love you no matter how you feel. I love you any way you are. I love you because you're you. The end. Thank you, my friends, for reading the book with me. And now we're going to go make some Play-Doh together. I hope you guys join me. All right, my friends. So we are going to start by making our Play-Doh first. Um, Play-Doh is a great way to help with their emotional development uh, just because they can be so expressive in how they make the Play-Doh. They can form shapes, um, they can form faces, so it's really great. Um, and then it can represent how they feel as well as it's always great for physical development because they are working on their fine motor skills, um, their spatial awareness as well. Um, and then also with the social skills because if you have, um, if they have siblings or cousins at home that they play with during um, this quarantine, um, then they can share the Play-Doh, they can take turns if you have any tools um, to date and be using our hands. But let's get started. So you are going to need a big bowl, a mixing spoon, you're going to need um, measuring spoons and cup. So first what we need, um, the adult is going to have to do this part because it involves hot water. You're going to need, I boiled the water, you're going to need one and a half cups of hot water. Next, what you're going to need is half a cup of salt. So what I like to do is to dissolve the salt in the hot water, makes it easier. And then after the water gets a little bit cooler to touch, then your little one can help you with the rest. Or as long as you stay away from the hot water, they can help you pour, um, pour in the salt and all that good stuff into your um, mixing cup. So I've poured it in and now I'm going to stir, stir, stir until the salt is all dissolved in the water. So this might take a little while. And if you have food coloring at home, this is a great time to have your little one help you choose what color they would like if you've got options. Today, I have green. So I have green food coloring. If you're gonna put food coloring in, this is a great time to do it. You need a little, a little tiny splash. Um, if you overdo it, then that just means your Play-Doh is gonna be that much brighter. So, a little splash. And if you are using a wooden spoon like I am, um, it will probably stain the spoon. So, just a warning. But look at that. My, my salt water has turned green. Oh my goodness. So, salt is almost dissolved. Yeah, dissolving the salt is my secret my secret trick that I do anytime I make Play-Doh. But, okay, so that is dissolved. In this bowl, I have one and a half, one and a half cup of flour. Um, it can be just your plain old all-purpose flour or whole wheat flour, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you have on hand. And I am going to just whoop, pour it in there. And we're gonna mix, 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 mix. Mixing, your little one's probably gonna wanna mix. It's super fun for them. I'm also gonna add 
three tablespoons of oil. Doesn't matter which oil, it could be vegetable, um, canola, really whatever you have in your pantry. But it does have to be the liquid form. One, two, making Play-Doh is another great way to help develop your little one's language skills as well as they help. You can read off the directions for them um, and then they can try to do it. If you're doing measurements um, or pouring everything in, like the three tablespoons, you can count with them. So you develop their math skills as well. But look how that is forming. So I'm gonna knead the rest with my hands. If the water is still hot, um, obviously your little one can't help you, but if the water has cooled down and it is nice to touch like this is right now, um, then you and your little one can help knead out the dough. So I'm just gonna pour it out onto the table. It look, It's feeling like it might need some more flour. Um, so we are going to grab that, but let's knead it out first before we figure it out. So if you, once you've played with it and you kind of, um, you want to save it, uh, to make this last, you're going to want to keep it in a sealed Ziploc bag stick it in your fridge or um, if you're doing the um, uh, less waste route then you just need a actually this might not need more flour um, you might need a airtight container uh, this should last for a little bit uh, we don't have cream of tartar but if you want to make it last even longer um, just put in three teaspoons of cream of tartar and it will last even more but look at how nice our play-doh is turning out the oil helps it so that it's not sticky it is nice so I'm gonna leave it here to cool a little bit more and then we will play with our play-doh okay, my friends so the play-doh is now nice and cool to touch so let's start playing with it okay are we ready this is how we roll the dough, roll the dough, roll the dough. This is how we roll the dough, roll, roll, make a ball. This isn't the best, but let's make it nice and round. Or you guys can do whatever you want at home. I'm gonna nice, make a nice big ball. And then we're gonna flatten the ball. Are we ready? This is how we flatten our dough. Flatten our dough. Flatten our dough. This is how we flatten our dough so we can make a. What do you think this looks like, my friends? I think this looks like a pancake. What do you guys think it is? All right. And then. This is how we make a smile, make a smile, make a smile. This is how we make a smile to show our friends we're happy. Can you guys see that? It's all smiley. Let's do it like this instead. So you guys can really see it at home. I'm gonna make one eye. Okay, 
I have two eyes and I'm gonna make a long one again, but this time I'm gonna make it frown. You know what? I'm gonna give my frowny face glasses because I wear glasses. So I'm gonna do one. My friends, you can make whatever you want. Let's see. Oh, I didn't put enough. Let's see here. Glasses. I'm all, can you, does that look like glasses, my friends, from home? What are you guys making? You guys can make anything you want out of your Play-Doh. And it's always a, it's always fun when you, when you ask your little ones what they've made because, you know, what you see isn't always necessarily what you get. I remember one time I asked a little one what they made out of their Play-Doh and it ended up being a whole story um, that they made up in their head and then they represented it through Play-Doh. But to me, it just looked like little separate pieces of Play-Doh. But to them, it was their whole story. So just asking them, Questions about what they made can really give you some insight on what they're thinking, how creative and imaginative they, they really are. Because you know, at this age, it's a little hard for them to visually represent what they're thinking in their head. But this is my frowny face with glasses, just like me. Hopefully you guys make this Play-Doh at home. You guys can play with it. Again, if you want to save it for later, either in a Ziploc bag or an airtight container, just stick it in your fridge and it should last for a while, especially if it's just you and your little one that's playing with it consistently. All right, my friends, thank you so much and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye now.